Suzuki Carry, get one. Hello and welcome back to my Honda Fix. Today we'll be taking a look at our under $1,000 Suzuki Carry budget build. As you just seen, there's the before and after, and here's some footage of the vehicle riding around through the woods. One of the questions I've been asked a few times is what type of lift kit we put on this. It was just a random Amazon slash eBay kit, I think around a hundred bucks. Comes with brackets for the rear to raise the leaf springs and it came with two adapters that go on the front struts to push them down a few inches. From the research we did, anything over two inches, three, four, etc., you're going to have to uh, basically push the suspension down lower the angle is too sharp for the axles with that being said the next question I get is about the wheels and tires as I said before we used a diamondback super grip tire it's a 23 8x12 they actually came on the rims that we purchased used uh, I believe the lug patterns a 4 by 114.3 um, as far as the rim it bears a striking resemblance to the Polaris razor wheel um, one of the wheels that they make uh, by Super ATV. Uh, there's another company called ITV that makes one that's very similar to this wheel. I have not been able to find a name on this wheel, however. The only modification we did to the wheel is we changed the color of the center cap from chrome to a matte black. So as far as suspension on this vehicle, we raised the vehicle two inches and we upgraded to a 23 inch tire. You are now looking at some of the before and after pictures from the photo shoots we did. You can see some of the upgrades, mostly paint in these pictures. We did go ahead and paint everything underneath, put it to a matte black. We did the underside of the bed. We also, you can see we camoed the stuff on the sides. Here is a before and the after of the receiver hitch that we made before obviously nothing is there afterwards you can see that we basically built this thing to set below the tire so we could flip down the license plate cover and get the spare tire out also once the bed is flipped down it does not interfere with the receiver itself um, it does if you let the gate slam down it might hit it i can't remember if we have bump stops there i think we do so it shouldn't hit at all even when you drop the tailgate down and dump the bed the tailgate drops straight down and doesn't interfere with the receiver. In the next shot, you will see the before and after of the bed liner. We did put the plastic bed liner back in later, but you will see in the next shot that the, the two different types of bed liner we used, obviously the outside, the sides did much better. You can see the cryolon in the center that we did on the flat part doesn't look quite as good as the sides. The sides came out perfect, but we did eventually put that bed liner back in. 
Now looking at the interior, everything was a factory gray. We did paint the steering wheel column and we did the center console in a matte black as well. There you can see them in the background in that picture. We also trimmed in in green on the outside, tan on the inside, and then we did matte black on the engine bay on the inside. I'm not sure I got an engine bay picture of them. Here's the other side. You can see the tan and green interior. And then we'll show you a shot of the back. See, we painted all that tan up in the top and we did pull those roof liners out. Uh, some plastic somebody shoved in there and we used 3M adhesive and reattached the original headliner and painted it tan as well or khaki. Here you can see a before shot of the dash before any modifications were made. We didn't do many modifications. One reason we left the door panels gray um, is because we left the dash gray so we wanted some of that to kind of still blend together. There you can see the after with the switches installed and the 12 volt accessory panel on top. The 12 volt accessory panel was purchased off of eBay. This one was set up as a 12 volt dual USB charger socket and blue LED voltmeter. Um, combination switch panels which you would look for on eBay. There's also different variations that you can do and color combinations available. And there you can see a shot of the back side. Very simple to wire up. And here's a shot of it installed. Next, we'll move on to the switches. The switches were from Norcross, Georgia, is where I ordered them from eBay uh, from a company called EG Action. They're a waterproof laser etched switch with a uh, blue backlight. It's actually dual backlight, so the like Sasquatch lights lights up when the headlights are turned on and then when you activate the switch the Sasquatch himself lights up. There you can see the switch is installed, rear lights, dark side lights, and Sasquatch lights. Here you can see a shot of it at night. The light bar combination kit that we used came from a company called LED Kingdom off of eBay as well. The front bar is a 42 inch curved light bar with custom made brackets. It's 240 watts, 80 LEDs, and 24,000 lumens. Very bright. It features 30 degree spot beam lights and 60 degree flood beam lights in combination. It's in a 6K pure white. The kit does also come with wiring harnesses included. Um, we did switch some of those out and went with a little heavier wiring and a little better relays. And we also changed out the switches. In the end, we were very pleased with how this light bar lined up with our new brackets and fit very well in the vehicle. As you can see, we tucked it down just below the roof line so that branches and stuff would clear the vehicle a little easier and wouldn't damage the light as easily. The 22 inch light bar is also from LED Kingdom. It is 120 watt, 40 LED, 12,000 lumen, also featuring the 30 and 60 degree spot beam uh, flood beam combo. And on the sides, we used a 4 inch light. They also came from LED Kingdom. They're 18 watts each. Um, and they had these six LED spotlights and produced 1800 lumens. And here you can see a shot of the back and how we tucked those down in there. The brackets for the side lights haven't been painted at this point, but they were painted before delivery. <laughs> here you can see a shot of the front LED bar doing its job. It is insanely bright in the woods. We were very pleased with it. Here's a close-up shot of the wheel and tire. Like I said before in an earlier video, we will be changing the tires out to a more aggressive tread later. These are the tires that came on the wheels. They're great tires, just not what we need them for. We need a little heavier tire for the woods. Here you can see a side shot of the battery and storage compartments. 
in a minute I'll show you what's inside the storage compartment. We did paint the battery to match just to make the overall look of the vehicle better. And this is one of my favorite features that I added to the vehicle. It's called a Tack Life. It is a battery booster pack. I highly recommend this for anything you own as far as a vehicle that you drive daily. Um, anything you use off roads could possibly get stuck in the woods. This thing is amazing. Uh, we fell in love with it. Uh, truly enjoyed playing with it. And I'll go over some of the features on this one. I got to give a special shout out to Future Tool on eBay. They sent this item out fast so I could get it installed before the reveal. If you order one, order it through them. They gave me a great price and they got it shipped to me fast. This is the Tac Life T6 car jump starter. It's 600 amps peak. Um, it's a 12 volt battery jumper. Some of the features include, uh, it comes with a flashlight. So if you're stuck out in the middle of nowhere, it's a great accessory, uh, dual USB. I like these cables over some of the other brands that I checked out. As far as the clamps, they're a little heavier than some of the other clamps on the market. And as you can see in the picture, it comes with a ton of options as far as charging and adapters you can hook up for 12 volt accessories. When we were going to deliver this vehicle to the owner, we stopped at a gas station and a guy on a Honda Accord was literally stranded with a dead battery. And we went over and offered to jump off his vehicle with the TAC Life, told him about it. We tried it out and from a complete dead battery, this thing fired that car, no problem. Uh, we were all impressed. The owner of the car was like, yeah, I definitely got to get one of these. He asked some questions about it. And then uh, we finished filling up our tank and hit the road. When we installed this, we actually drilled a hole, put in a grommet and ran a line directly to the battery. So anytime he starts and cranks his vehicle, this thing is actually charging as he drives around. And if for any reason the battery dies, this thing will be fully charged and ready to jump him off in any emergency. It's also great because you run across other four-wheelers and ATVs and you can help jump other people off if needed. And as you can see here, it is charging in place. We drilled a hole through the bag and directly plugged it into the Tack Life. This is the only thing I would rec recommend that Tack Life would actually do is create some way that you can plug this thing in while it's in the protective case so it can be charging going down the road. The only other major modifications was covered in other episodes was pretty much the paint. You can see how all that was done in previous episodes. Again, we want to thank you for watching. There is one more episode coming. I don't think you can guess what the surprise is. You will be shocked. As always, thanks for sticking around. Please subscribe, like, comment. We want to hear your feedback, but we do need the subscribes and the likes for YouTube to fall in love with us. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around and be sure you watch the next episode. Thank you.